right guys, so today we're getting, I uh, put together that Raspberry Pi and I got it working at home a couple months, about a month ago, and I made videos on it. I'm going to make a playlist, so a video playlist, so if you want to watch, if you want to see that, my making of this Raspberry Pi to FT8, that's going to be my attempt today, is to make a, a, a digital contact using FT8, a Raspberry Pi, and a radio. And um, that's the attempt. Let's hope I got it all back there. Now I didn't, I just kind of threw it all in a box, right? I just kind of threw stuff in a box. I didn't try to go lightweight or anything. It's just kind of trying to prove that it works. And I'll show you everything when I get out there. But if I can get the Raspberry Pi to work with a tiny little screen, then that'll be pretty, pretty cool. Okay guys, as you see, it is getting fall. We've dropped down into the 40s and 50s all of a sudden. I knew it would do that. I knew it would go from 90 down to 40, just like that. Because there are no changes of the seasons anymore. Anyway, this is the second time I shot this video because I forgot to bring connectors and so forth and I screwed up my tripod. I don't have the right top for it, so I'm gonna be holding the camera the whole time. All right, now I mentioned in my last video, if I posted it, that I brought connectors, which has been important. So let's talk about everything I've got going. First of all, what we're doing, if you haven't seen it, check out the playlist. I've got the Raspberry Pi, which I've already set up to work with FT8, okay? Haven't started it yet. I've got the Signalink sound card. I've got it all connected up. Now at home, this worked. At home, this is a Bluetooth keyboard, which I've got a little Bluetooth USB right here. I've got a mouse in here. I also have the sound card connected here. Here, and this was all configured using Linux, Raspberry Pi. If you're interested in how to do this setup, message me and I'll point you in the right direction and try and help you as much as I can. Okay, so the BPP120, I think, from BioNO Power. Um, they sent me that a long time ago, and they also sent me that, 12 volt, 12 amp hour. Now, I only need 15 to 20 watts for this to work, because my antenna, let's go take a look. This is the Elecraft AT1, and I, the reason I'm using this is because it's easy to set up the AX1. Sorry. So it's supposed to be resonant on, it's resonant on 20 meters, okay, and you put it on 20 meters. And it should just work and it's daytime still all right so they give you this little cou counterpoise and what i'm going to do is raise it up and bring the counterpoise straight out and tie it to that tree over there and then this will come up this is a camera mount and then of course i have my long cable because i wanted to i brought the 40 foot cable because i wanted it to reach okay so i have that antenna the ax1 raised up i have the counterpoise going horizontal and I just tied it off to a tree over here. It's very light, this whole thing could fall over. It's actually already fallen over. I'm gonna expand the base down there so it doesn't fall over as likely. Okay, the reason I like this antenna is that it's so easy to put up. I don't have to worry with trees or anything. I can just put it up and go. Okay, now I expect that antenna to work because we're doing digital and using very low, uh, and digital is pretty efficient. But, um, okay, so I mounted this on plexiglass and then I took a Dremel tool and I cut it off. It did a terrible job, but at least it's all mounted and it's fairly small. And I'll boot that up here in a second. In theory, when I turn this on, it should boot up. Okay, all I have powered is this. And this is power. The little monitor is powered by the Raspberry Pi itself. The reason I don't have the top on that is because it was getting, it was getting hot. And, you know, I have a white cover that goes on that. So this is booting up. And if I'm able to connect to the radio, this should work. I've got to go over to... Okay, so I'm booted up and it's kind of hard to see the screen. I'm gonna go down here. It's been a while. Ham radio, WSJTX. Okay, after about five minutes, I realized that I forgot to do the USB to USB here. I just totally forgot to plug in the radio. I thought this one cord could do it, but there's just so much to remember. And if you take a little time off, you get rusty. I'm wishing that I got a bigger screen now because this screen is hard to see. So, there we go. 
it knows my radio. Holy cow, this is gonna work. So now I'm on 20 meters. I'm gonna go to 14074 and listen. All right, let's WSJTX. Dang it, I forgot how to do this. Enable. Enable transmit. I'm so sorry guys, this is so hard to see. Kind of regretting now getting such a tiny monitor. Hey man, I'm transmitting. All right, I hope this works. Now I'm gonna check the reverse beacon network. I do believe it works for digital. The cool thing about uh, FT8 is you don't have to maintain a QSO. It does it for you. It's kind of cool sometimes not to have to worry about it. Is this gonna work? Really wishing I would have bought a little bit bigger screen. It's transmitting. So I'm getting a two to one here. I don't have any antenna tuner, so there's not much I can do about it at this point. Let's just hope. Nothing on reverse beacon network. Nothing. So I had to go, I decided to try a different cable. I brought, had to bring this closer. So I had to dig in my assortment here. And I'm, I gotta go from B and C to PL259 to get that radio there. All right, I'm gonna enable again. And let's see what kind of SWR, see I change cables out. Let's see if that makes a difference. I'm doing 20 watts, which is the max. Well, I'm about 2.3 to, to one, not the best in the world. I'm not super happy with that, but I, I had to move that closer. This antenna is weak. I know that. I really know that. Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, a lot of things actually did go well. Like, I hadn't touched that stuff in a month. And it, I'm actually surprised that the radio connected to the Raspberry Pi because sometimes that can be flaky. Um, I actually had to refer to my video that I made on how to do this to check some settings and I realized one of my cables wasn't connected because there's just so much to remember. Um, actually that it connected, the only weird thing was that I wasn't getting any receive. I wasn't getting any, there was, I was hearing the sounds but I wasn't actually receiving and decoding. Maybe something's wrong but what I'll do is I'll go home and I'll hook this up almost with the same kind of thing. I'm going to bring a bigger screen next time. It's so hard to see that little screen. It's convenient and it works. It's just too hard. It's too hard to, you can't mouse around on it. It's too small. I still like it. I'm still going to use it, but it's almost, I still could have made a contact with it, but it's hard to debug, especially when you can't hardly see the screen. So I'm going to bring a bigger screen. I'm going to go debug it and get it working. Uh, thank you so much for all the comments. I've been getting so many, 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 many comments. Please write below. If you see something you like, you don't like, just be nice. Don't fight. <laughs> all right. I'm enjoying this weather, man. Finally here. It's finally here. When it's all said and done and all packs up to this. Yeah, that's a mess over there. I'm not proud of that, but this is the mess. 